My name is Carl Alexander. Uh, I'm also a WordCamp organizer for WordCamp Montreal. I've been organizing uh, WordCamps and WordPress events since 2010, I think. Uh, and I also write regularly on my blog, which I will talk about just shortly. Uh, if you want to talk to me, the easiest way to do it is on uh, Twitter. Uh, my handle is twigpress. And like I said, I write uh, regularly on my blog, uh, carlalexander.ca. Uh, before we begin, um, this is a really common uh, joke around me. If you've ever read anything on my blog, I like talking about advanced topics. This kind of happens pretty often when I get to speak. But I fight very hard against this. And this talk is no exception. There's a lot of extra material around this talk. There's a GitHub project, which I'll point at the end. And there's also a 3,000 word companion article that you can refer to. So if I normally, I do a lot of question periods during the talk. But if I lose you during, there's at least that that you can refer to later on. So now that this is done, here's what you're all here for. This code worked the other day. Who's had this problem before? <laughs> it's, it's a really frustrating problem. And the, you want to protect yourself. Um, and the only, way to, the only way to do that is with unit testing. And what is unit testing? It's testing at the smallest scale. It's inputting values into a function and checking what comes out at the end. And the goal with that is to have a constant behavior from your code. It's also to have a sort of safety net so that these frustrating moments of, god damn it, this worked yes, yesterday. I don't understand. And because of that, your code also becomes a lot stronger, and you get higher quality code out of it. So let's talk a bit about unit testing before getting into an example. Uh, the most important part of it about unit testing is isolation. Um, it's actually the cornerstone of unit testing. It's done using test doubles. Um, test doubles are these kind of machines, I call them magical machines, that surround your code and give you absolute control, like if you were some sort of god. And it, what it does is it lets you know, what is my code doing? And this is important because it's not really about what is WordPress doing. And I'm going to do a small tangent about that uh, to talk about unit tests versus uh, the WordPress test suites. Um, the WordPress test suite is what really we call uh, integration testing. And integration testing has a kind of different relationship with isolation. Uh, it's, it's more about how we piece code together. Um, it's your plugin with WordPress. How does it behave together? It's not so much about this idea of isolating a piece of code where like the term unit comes from. And it's not really that. Uh, one is better than the other, ideally you should do both. So now that I, I've done this little tangent, we're going to start talking about uh, how you can get started with unit testing. So for this, for this example, we're going to be uh, focused on Unix-based uh, operating systems. So I'm really sorry for uh, Windows users out there. Um, if you want to do this, you can use a virtual machine. but Really, a lot of the tools are just based for Mac OS or uh, Linux. In terms of the code, we're going to be a bit further ahead. Uh, we're going to use PHP 5.3 uh, for the code and 5.4 uh, for the tests. Uh, the reason for 5.3 is we're going to use namespaces. And the reason for 5.4 is uh, the testing. one of the testing libraries that we're going to use uh, uses traits. So uh, because of that, we have to go uh, with PHP 5.4. We also need Composer. Uh, PHP Unit, which is the default uh, testing library, that's also what WordPress uses to run its test. So we'll be using that as well. And we'll be using WPCLI, our favorite uh, WordPress command line client. Uh, this is a bit optional, but it does speed up a bit of the process of doing this. Creating our first unit tested plugin. So this is the easiest step so far. Just use WPCLI and uh, scaffold 
uh, plugin. Uh, because you have WPCLI scaffolds already all the unit testing, uh, bootstrapping files, it simplifies a lot of the work. That's why it's an optional dependency for, for our example. But it does really simplify a lot of the work that you want to do. So it's really useful for that. Uh, we're also going to add a composer.json file. Uh, that's for uh, Composer, which is our package manager that we're going to be using uh, for our testing setup. And inside it, we're going to, this is just a sample of what it looks like. Really, the two important lines are uh, this one, which basically says that we're going to use PHP 5.3. And uh, this one, which uh, required dev is basically a second section that says we need this library when we're developing. So it, it really has no impact when you're creating your plugin or coding in general when you're sending it to clients. It's just for our testing purposes when you're going to send it on GitHub for automated testing, it just will download this library to run our tests. We also have to modify the bootstrap.php. Uh, this, is, this is a file created by WPCLI. It looks like this. And the only thing that's missing is the composer uh, auto load, auto, oh, sorry, auto loader. Uh, so we're just going to add that line here at the top. And we're good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our first plugin function. It's a pretty easy function. It's just get, a plugin, get your plugin option with our namespace and our function, where we namespace our option, because everybody knows that you should namespace your options. So we're going to be testing that to make sure that our plugin correctly namespaces options when uh, it fetches them from the WordPress database. So our first unit test. This is, a, this is what the unit test uh, looks like right now. Uh, as you might have noticed, we're still using the same namespace as before, unit test demo. Uh, we're also going to import uh, PHP mock, which is our mocking, function, uh, mocking library for uh, PHP functions, which I'll go over in a bit. And then we have our demo, demo class, uh, demo test class, which is where we'll store our tests, and our trait, which is the what we were using from the PHP mock library. Uh, that's why we need PHP 5.4. Uh, it's just because of this one single line. I, I want to note that if you do not want to use this library, uh, TenUp does have a library called WP mock that's a bit more limited, but does not have this PHP 4 requirement. So if you want to use that instead, um, you can use that as well to do something like this. So testing our demo get option. Here's our, here's our testing function. So right now, what we have is test that demo get option. Uh, we always have to prefix our functions with test underscore. This is a requirement from PHP unit. Uh, that's how it flags this function as a test versus some helper function that you have within your class. And then we have this asserts equal. So, so far we haven't talked about assertions. Assertions is, is really the heart of a unit test. It checks that what we're getting back from our function is what we expect uh, to get back. So in this case, we're going to test that uh, we expect to get back the value bar when we do demo get option for the foo option. Now, what, the, what happens if we try to run this? Uh, Damn, it doesn't work. <laughs> That's because right now it goes to the WordPress database. And the WordPress database isn't preceded with any sort of option, uh, so it returns false. So this is not what we want. Uh, so we need to fix that. We need our test double. So this is why we needed the PHP mock library. So this is, uh, we're going to create a mock of get option. So what's a mock? A mock is a test double. Uh, a test double is a, not a method uh, with unit testing where you can simulate the function or an object and verify how you interact with it. This is really important because uh, it's the only type of test double that does that. And it's really at the heart of what we're trying to do with unit testing is we want to check the behavior 
of get option through our demo get option uh, method. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure uh, our mock. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to say, I expect get option to get called once. And then we're going to say, I expect that I expect get option to get called with the parameter demo underscore foo. And when it does satisfy both those criteria, it will return the value bar. And then if you try to run our test again, it passes. Because at this point, we've managed to simulate, uh, we've inserted our mock instead of the regular uh, WordPress function. And at this point, we're not hitting the database anymore. So we're not getting the value false anymore, which is really uh, powerful. And it's awesome, because our first test passes, and we can try to do something a bit more complex now with it. Um, another common thing that you see when you use uh, get option is you store arrays in it. And one of the things that you run into is that you don't always get an array back. And the common way that, if you, that you solve that in core is you'll just cast uh, that option as, a, as an array right away, uh, just in case that you don't get the value that you want or, or not an array. But what we're going to do this time is we're going to do, uh, we're going to have our function do that for us. But we're going to do it in reverse. We're going to start with the test failing, and we're going to, we're going to go through that and make a pass it. We're going to fix our code and make sure that our tests pass. And that's going to give you a bit of a, an idea of what test-driven development is, which is this philosophy of going with your tests written first and then writing your code afterwards with this, the idea of um, writing the least amount of code possible to fix your bug, which is the failing test. So before we do that, we're going to have to do a small change to our demo get option uh, method. We're, not, we're going to need to pass it a default variable. So what we're going to, so we're going to update our demo get option uh, function and add the default value, which is null. But we also need to update our tests as well. So now we're saying, not only are we expecting uh, demo underscore foo, but we're also expecting uh, the identical value null. And you'll notice here that we're using equal and identical to. This is just from PHP. So in PHP, you have double equal for equal to and then triple equal signs for identical. This prevents issues, for example, if you pass an empty array or an empty string, those are all going to be equal to the same thing with a double equal, but they won't be equal to the same thing if you use a triple equal. So that's why you use identical two. So let's create our failing test. So this is, this is our, our failing test so far. It's really similar to our other tests, really, because the idea with unit testing is you're changing your inputs, outputs, and expected values. So there shouldn't be too much to change between tests, and this is the same case here. What we're saying is we're saying that uh, we want to pass the, val the default value to be an array, and we expect to return bar again, because that's the error that we're checking for, but on the other side, we expect the value to be an array with bar inside. And if you run your test right now, it's going to fail, because we haven't changed anything in our code, and we're still going to return bar and not an array. But we can do that. We can fix that really easily by adding this line here, which checks if our default value is an array, but the option that we got back is an array. We cast that option as an array and return it. And, then, and at that point, our test passes. And that's it for like this simple example. But the idea with unit testing is it's in a habit. By itself, it feels pretty insignificant. Like, I'm pretty sure you were thinking, you saw these two examples, and you're like, well, that's pretty basic. That doesn't do that much. But really what it is, is it's really one 
loop in your safety net. It takes hundreds of these tests for really for it to, to feel significant, to feel safe, because one test by itself is just, again, a small case, a small unit of code that you're testing. But WordPress or your plugin is hundreds of functions, and each of them have special cases that you can think of every day, but you might not be thinking about in eight months when something breaks and you don't remember why it broke. Well, it's really hard to go back in those cases, and it might take you a day to figure it out where, where you did that little typo and how it interacted with everything else in your code. So it's a lot easier when you can have these mocks around it. And I went already ahead for that one. Uh, but it's a lot like picking up a new habit. So my suggestion is you have to start and you try to do it a bit. And you keep doing more and more. And like any exercise, you, it's hard to stay motivated, but you keep at it. And that's it. So the first link is uh, the demo project. So this is on GitHub if you want to see uh, the exact code that I run right now, it also, also runs through Travis CI. So if you want to see how this runs with an automated uh, testing system like Travis, you can see how that works. So, and then uh, below is the article I wrote on this. Thank you. Questions? All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Do it. Well, it's for like tall people. All right. Uh, so. That's, it's a great primer, like, oh, you're getting into it. I have a, a brand new project. Here's some, like, tests. Mm -hmm. What if uh, uh, I'm a developer, I have a, a bunch of plugins. Uh, like I, I've written hundreds of plugins. Yes. Yeah. How do I get started with projects like I already have? Like, where's the best place to start in terms of developing uh, those well, tests? There's, a, there's entire books written about this, but uh, the best strategy that I can give you is um, because it's small functions, uh, you can even go, like, if a client comes to you and tr creates a, a, tells you, oh, this isn't working, and then you create a, an issue in your ticket system, you can be, well, from this point on, whenever a client uh, has an issue and we find a bug in the code, we have to create a test for that piece of code. And then you just start from there. And honestly, it, you can get pretty far with that, just that simple philosophy of just going from that point on and creating a test around it. And the beauty of, of unit testing in that scenario is that you don't have to uh, create all this infrastructure around WordPress. Like most of the WordPress tests, you have to seed the database, create your options inside. With this, you just create a small mock. You're like, oh, this is, this is what's happening. Like, it's happened so many times. How many people here bar dump when something goes wrong? Yeah, exactly. So this is, the mock is really similar to a var dump in the sense that you, you var dump and you see what the values are and you're like, oh, this isn't working. You can, you can just simulate that through the mock because you pass the same values through it and you'll see that the code isn't working and then you can fiddle around with it till it works. Um, so it's really powerful around that, and it lets you solve these problems a lot faster, especially for your clients, because, again, there's a bit less setup required. But um, the best system is really to just start with the bugs, like, as they come in. Yeah. Like, when I was at an old agency, that's what we did. We just started at that point, and at that point, we said, from this point on, we, and there's no more chips coming into this house, and you basically start doing a test every time there's a bug. And you'll be surprised how far you can get with that. Cool, thank you. Any other questions? Hello? Hello. Hey, so I have a few questions about uh, milliseconds. How many, 
how fast has uh, your test suite been running for plugins? Um, I'm running about 200 right now, um, and they run in two seconds. Um, it really, it will depend. So in this example, um, I took some shortcuts. For example, uh, WordPress is still loading. Uh, it, if you, if you paid attention, because I'm still bootstrapping the same way, uh, WordPress is loading um, when it doesn't really need to. Uh, the idea is you're, you're supposed to decouple WordPress entirely from, uh, from the, the testing, uh, and that's supposed to, that speeds it up a lot because you're not doing an SQL collection. Like, to give you an idea for the get option, if you were doing a WordPress test normally, each option test is a, it's a database connection, which is incredibly uh, slow. Uh, because you connect to the database, get the data back, uh, and you have to reestablish that connection for every test, unless you, you specifically configure your suite to, to keep the connection live. But uh, that can be very costly uh, in terms of time. And that's why uh, inter unit tests in general are supposed to be faster than integration tests, which are supposed to be faster than uh, acceptance testing, which I haven't talked about, but is uh, it's all at the browser level. You had another question? Yes. Yeah, so for your um, so for your automated testing, do you test between the multiple matrix matrices of WordPress, multi-site installation, WordPress yeah. running under a subdirectory, WordPress? Well, you, actually, under... you you don't need to do any of that. Uh, at least not for unit testing, because again, you're you're mocking the WordPress functions. So as far as, as you're concerned, WordPress isn't really there. Uh, you're, you have to be, OK, I expect to get this value back from WordPress. Uh, it's on your onus to, to do that step. You have to be able to say, OK, well, like in this case, I expect to get bar back. But really, in, in most cases, if you're smart and you saved your value as an array, you're, you're not going to get that. So you're really testing hypotheticals. Uh, in that scenario, so you really don't need to run through the entire matrices. What you do need to run through, though, is all the matrices of PHP versions, because you're testing code. So in that respect, you still need to run that. But in, in terms of, of the WordPress version, you don't need to, uh, unless you're testing, again, uh, changes. Like one test that, that would come to mind right now is I've, I ran into a lot of issues recently. There was a WP sign up. The emails parameters changed a lot. So for example, for that, you want to run a bunch of tests. But again, it's on you to simulate that. You don't need WordPress to, to be different. You just have to be like, OK, I, I need to set up, uh, I need to send these variables if WordPress is lesser than this version, which you can simulate yourself. So again, you. You really want to get WordPress out of the picture. But um, in terms of timing, like I said before, we're still loading it. Uh, that's because one of the hurdles that I haven't been able to get over yet is there's some classes like WP error or underscore underscore uh, for the translations that are really hard to uh, extract out. So if you have like translations in your, in your code, it can be hard to uh, deal around that. So it's just kind of a a cheat to, to leave it there so that the fallback to WordPress still works. Because it's just a namespace cascading. That's how it works. What's your approach on testing WordPress themes? And how have you gone about that? Uh, I've not done this for teams. But in terms of just thinking about it right now, uh, I would approach it the similar way it, in, the sen in the sense that you want to just test your functions.php. You're not really testing. Uh, your JavaScript, like if you want to test your JavaScript in unit testing, you have to use a different testing suite. But if you're testing, uh, for example, if if a hook gets added at the right time, um, the for example, the 10 up WP mock has a really good uh, set of functions around that. Like it says, like I expect this action to be to be entered, or I expect it not to be entered, and then you'll get an error if that happens. So you can definitely do that with your teams. But I think it won't be as strong unless you have a lot of business logic in your team, because unit testing is really about the logic of your code, as more so than the behavior of your team for uh, your users or clients. Last question. Uh, would, have you been using the uh, WP test suite uh, classes that they provide 
uh, for uh, providing shortcuts for testing Word, like WordPress URLs and navigation and uh, the rewrite rules. Like, have you been using the helper libraries in the test suite? Uh, yes, but not in this context. Yeah. Uh, because again, the context that I'm trying to, like when I'm, so it, it's a bit unclear without doing a separate talk on t like the global scope of testing, but what we really want to test with unit test is really, um, am I insane? Not really is WordPress insane. Um, so it's really, no, but it's, it's, really, it's really about your code. It's about what you're coding and your business logic as opposed to what WordPress is doing. Uh, and in those cases, uh, the WordPress helper functions are, are super useful to know is, is what I coded playing well with WordPress, that's super good. But if, if you're trying to test like, um, if my plugin is activated, add these rewrite rules, um, you, you, don't need, you don't need those helper functions to figure that out. And it'll be faster, like you said. Like you want, if you want your test suite to run really quickly, it'll be a lot faster if you do that. Yeah, those would be useful for integration tests, but you're right, that would be separate from the unit test suite. Yeah, yeah. Like I said uh, initially, like I, I have actually zero problems with the WordPress uh, test suite. It's just depending on what I'm trying to do. Sometimes I'm just trying to see if the way I'm coding things makes sense, and not really. I'm not. I don't want to be bogged down by how it's integrating into WordPress. Like I'm, I'm really more focused on on the behavior of my own code, and in that that sense, I find that unit testing is extremely powerful, but uh, you have to use it. it, it it's not an absolute solution. It, you have to find where it fits in your own workflow uh, and really on the complexity of your code, right? Like the, the example here was quite simple, but um, a good example is like, you know, if you're WooCommerce and you have a complex taxation VAT you te like add-on and you want to test the business logic around there, then it's a lot more interesting for that because really it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with with WordPress itself, you're just trying to test the, the taxation logic. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, well, thanks a lot.